Alyssa from Alyssa Threads, and today we're going to be sewing my early spring Nomi pattern, ME2019. So let's talk about this pattern a little bit before we jump into it. It comes with three sleeve options, as you can see a short sleeve, a long sleeve, and ties, which is perfect for every season. I've got you covered. The short sleeve though is probably my favorite. You guys know I love a good puff sleeve. It also features a button back. I know buttons can be a little intimidating, but I promise once you get it down, you'll be wanting to put buttons on everything. The pattern also features a very fitted bodice, which I love. I'm only five foot, I have a very short torso. If you have a little bit of a longer torso, there's also an option where you can lengthen it or even shorten it more if you need to. Okay, once you've got your fabric, you've picked your sleeve options, you have all your notions, we can get started on sewing. I have two patterns out for you today because this pattern comes in sizes 8 to 26 and you'll see that this envelope only has sizes 8 through 16 and this envelope has sizes 18 through 26. So when you're purchasing your pattern, you just want to be mindful of which size you need because it will come in two different envelopes. So today we're gonna to be sewing view A, which is the long sleeve version that has kind of a bubble sleeve. So in between the elbow and the shoulder, it has another elastic right there to give it a little bit more puff because you guys know I love my puff sleeves. And then view B is a short puff sleeve and view C has ties. Now when you flip it over to the back, you'll see it has fabric suggestions up here and after all those suggestions, it has the lining and interfacing. So then right below the suggested fabrics, it will have all the notions that you'll need and then it'll give you all the sizing and how much fabric you'll need for the main fabric, the lining and the interfacing, plus how much you'll need for the elastic for all of the bubble sleeves. And then of course down here, it gives you all of the finished measurements of what your top will be after you're done sewing it. So make sure you pay attention to those to figure out what size you need because these are not standard ready to wear sizings. Before we get into all of the pattern pieces, I just wanted to point out that this pattern is made to be able to sew with sheer fabrics. Um, as you can see on the photo of view A, this fabric is sheer and it has extra lining pieces in it. So there are extra lining pieces if you're sewing a sheer fabric. However, if you're sewing a cotton, you won't need those extra lining pieces and I'll break it down for you so you know which is which and which ones you're gonna need so that you don't have to waste any fabric. So this is piece one, which is the bodice front. And this is a piece that you'll need to cut the fabric if you're sewing a sheer fabric. If you're not sewing sheer fabric, you don't need to cut one of the fabric. You can just cut one lining and one interfacing. And the same goes for piece two, which is the bodice side front. If you're sewing a sheer fabric, go ahead and cut two of the fabric. If you're not sewing sheer, you can just cut the lining and the interfacing and you'll need two of each. Piece three is an interfacing piece that you will cut on the fold. This is gonna be for the bust. Piece four is the bodice front and you only need to cut two of these of your main fabric. Piece five is the bodice lower front and you'll be cutting this on the fold and you need to cut one fabric and one lining. Piece six is the bodice lower side front and you will be cutting two fabric and two lining. Piece seven is the bodice back and you'll be cutting two fabric and two lining. Piece eight is the back interfacing and you'll need two of these. Piece nine is the puff sleeves and you only need this if you're sewing view A or B and you'll cut two. Piece 10 is the lower sleeve and you'll need two of these. This is only if you're sewing view A, which we are today. Piece 11, 12, and 13 are elastic guides. So you will not be cutting any fabric of these. You're only gonna cut elastic. So you, if you're sewing view A, you'll do all three. If you're sewing view B, you only need 12. And if you're sewing C, you don't need any of them. And you'll see here to cut two of each piece for the elastic. 14 is the front ruffle and you'll cut this on the fold. 15 is the back ruffle and you'll cut two of these. Piece 17 is for if you're cutting for view C. This is the ties. Okay, before we get into sewing the pattern, I just wanted to point out one more thing that while we're sewing, I am going to 
explain what we're doing and then I will do it off camera on the sewing machine and come back. If you're not sure what the next step means or anything, there is a glossary on the pattern that will explain if I say, okay, now we need to gather, top stitch, under stitch, it's all right here, it will explain it for you. And okay, so our first step, we're taking the bodice front lining and at the dot at the bottom, we are just gonna reinforce this. So we're gonna sew about an inch away all the way to the dot and then pivot and go back. So it's kind of gonna be in a V. Okay, and I have arrows on mine because they're so similar. So I just wanna make sure I don't forget which part is the top and which part is the bottom. Once we reinforce this dot right here, we are just gonna take our scissors and snip it just a bit so that it's open there. Then we're gonna take our bodice front lining and we are gonna match up the notches. Okay, now we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance all the way down. Once we've sewn the lining pieces, we are just going to clip it. Be sure not to clip through your stitches. Okay, now we're gonna open this up and we're gonna press our seams toward the front center. Okay, once you have everything all interfaced, all the pieces that it tells you to add your interfacing to, we are gonna stay stitch the top of the overlay front just across the top part. Okay, now that we've stay stitched the top, we are going to sew these together. Okay, now that these are together, we're gonna sew at the top, making sure to back stitch all the way to the dot right here. You're not gonna go all the way down. You're gonna stop at the dot and back stitch. Okay, I've sewn this together and pressed the seam. Now we're gonna sew a gather stitch from the top dot to the bottom dots here. And then we're also gonna sew a gather stitch on each side where the dots start and end. Okay, so we've gathered the center and the side pieces. If you were going to sew a sheer fabric, this is where you would add that extra layer of lining that would look similar to this, but it would be in the fabric. So you would just take your two fabrics and lay them just like this with the right side to the wrong side. And you would just stitch it all the way around for an extra layer. Okay, whatever we do here on the main fabric, we'll be doing the same thing for the lining. So we're just gonna take our side front pieces and pin them to the lower front. Okay, now I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna sew 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance on each side for the lining and the main fabric. And then I'm gonna press the seams towards the center. Okay, now we're gonna stitch our upper bodice to our lower bodice. And where we have this V right here where we stopped sewing to the dots, we are just gonna line it up. You can see that it's a V shape on my fabric here where we put the dot on the lower front. Okay, now when we sew these together, we're gonna sew 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, but when we come to this dot, we're gonna leave it here, so we'll leave our needle here, we'll sew here, leave our needle there, kind of rearrange our fabric, and then sew off this way. And we'll do the same thing with our main fabric. So here, place your needle here, rearrange your fabric, and then finish sewing the whole way. Okay, once you've sewn your front bodice and lining, you're just gonna press your seams towards the top and then we're gonna work on the back. So for the back pieces, we've sewn the darts on our main fabric and our lining fabric on each side. Now we're gonna take our front pieces again and we're gonna pin the sides.
Okay, we have the front piece done. Now we're gonna pin the sides of our lining. Okay, once we have the side seams pinned together on the lining and the fabric, we're just gonna sew 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance on both the lining and the outer fabric. Okay, now we have the entire bodice sewn together. We have the back and the front, and now we're gonna work on the sleeves. Now we have our sleeve pieces. It's a little hard to see my markings because they are the same color as the florals on the fabric, but I have two dots on each side, kind of where there's an angle on the sleeve. We are gonna reinforce these by sewing just like we did on the top, where we like sewed a V here, just from here to this dot and up, and then we're gonna do the same from here to the dot and over. So it's gonna be on both sleeves. Once we have these reinforcement stitches on each side of the sleeves, we are just gonna cut a little snip to the dot so that it's open. Be sure you're not cutting into your stitch. It's just the fabric only. Okay, now we're gonna take our bias tape and we are gonna unfold one edge of it, starting where we made that little snip. We are gonna pin it right sides together all the way around the sleeve to the other side where we made that little cut. Okay, once you make it around to the other side, I just snip it off. Okay, now we're gonna do our other sleeve. Okay, once I have my sleeves all pinned, I am gonna go sew the bias tape down where it creases here. I'm just gonna follow along that and sew it all the way around. Okay, once you have the bias tape sewn, wherever there are curved edges, you always want to make sure you cut notches. This just helps them lay super flat and they look really good. Making sure not to cut into your seam. Okay, once I've clipped those notches, I just took this over to the iron and pressed the bias tape up. And then we are just gonna flip it right over so that the bias tape is now on the wrong side of the fabric. And we're gonna pin the bias tape all the way around. So it should look like this. The bias tape is now on the wrong side of your fabric. Okay, now we're gonna go back to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew the very edge around the bias tape, making sure we backstitch at the beginning and the end. This is making a casing for the elastic that gives us a really, really cute puff sleeve. We've sewn the casing for the sleeves. Now we have our shoulder elastic. We're gonna need a safety pin for this part. Just safety pin one side of it and feed it all the way through that casing that you made. Before you pull the end all the way through, I like to pin my elastic to the top so that it doesn't go through and you have to start all over again. We have our elastic pinned through our sleeve. Now I just like to go do a little stitch to hold the elastic in place on each side. Okay, now we're gonna take the bottom half of our sleeve, scooch it down a bit, and the upper half of our sleeve, and we are gonna pin it together at the top up here.
Okay, now where we have pinned them together, we're gonna sew three fourths of an inch all the way across. Okay, now that we have this trimmed here, you can see that we have the top fabric and then the bottom fabric. We are gonna trim the top fabric down. So make sure you're not trimming this one, just the top one. We're just gonna trim it down. I just surged mine here and I'm just pinning that down. Um, but as the instructions say, you just flip it over a quarter of an inch and pin it. And this is gonna make the casing for our elastic at the top of our sleeve. Okay, and then we're gonna stitch across the top up here. Okay, now we're gonna take our elastic pieces for the sleeve and where we just made the casing, we are going to just slide the elastic all the way through like we did at the top of the sleeve. And I always put a pin in the end so that it doesn't slip through and make me do it all over again. Okay, now I'm gonna go secure the elastic on each side, and then with right sides together, I'm gonna to sew the entire seam from top to bottom to make a sleeve. Okay, our sleeves are sewn. Now we're gonna work on the wrist of our sleeve. In the instructions, you just turn it over a quarter of an inch, and then do a double fold and leave a small opening for the elastic, but because I surged um, my raw edges. I'm just going to turn it up once and I'm going to pin it all the way around and then I'm going to sew and leave a small opening for the elastic. Okay, now we're just going to do the same thing we did before, taking our elastic using the safety pin and we are going to pull it all the way through the casing at the wrist. And once the elastic is through, we are just gonna pin it together and go and stitch it so that it's nice and secure. Okay, now we have our sleeve casing sewn. Everything is all closed, the elastic is sewn. Now this is the fun part where our top starts to look like a top. We are gonna bring the bodice back out. Okay, now we're gonna take each sleeve and we're gonna line it up with the notches. Now, when it comes to the elastic casing piece that we cut down to our stay stitch, you're just gonna open that and lay it flat on your fabric. Then when we stitch the lining together, we'll just sew right over that and you won't see the opening there. Okay, now we're gonna go base stitch our sleeves to the bodice. And this is a good time to try on your top, make sure everything's fitting. If it's a little too wide or you need to take it out a little bit, this is the perfect time to do that before we sew the lining in. Okay, now we're gonna work on the peplum. So we're gonna take the really long part of the peplum and we are going to make sure it's right sides together and we are gonna stitch them all together. So we're gonna sew this at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, I've sewn my, I've sewn my peplum pieces together and then I finished the raw edges on the sides and the bottom. And then I went ahead and did a gather stitch along the top. And now we are just gonna take our peplum piece and we're gonna pin it to the right side of our top. As I'm clipping to the notches, I just like to even out my gather stitches just so that it's not all in one spot. I really like to spread it out so that it's more even.
Okay, now we're gonna go base stitch the ruffle to the top. Okay, our bodice is all sewn together. We have the peplum and the sleeves all sewn. Now we are gonna sew the lining. So we're gonna start by pinning just the top of the bodice together. So you have right side up, and then we're gonna lay the lining right on top of it. And we're gonna pin the top, making sure our notches match. And this could be a little bit tricky, but we are sandwiching the sleeves in between the lining and the outer fabric. So it will look like this. You'll have three layers of fabric here. Okay, so you can see we have the top all pinned together and the sleeves are sandwiched here in between. We are gonna go stitch the top 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance all the way over. Okay, our lining is sewn to our main fabric. Now we're just gonna clip the curves along the bust and anywhere else it needs and then we're gonna understitch. Okay, so I've pressed my seams toward the lining and now I'm just gonna understitch, which means sewing about an eighth of an inch on the lining side all the way around the bodice. Okay, now that our lining is understitched all the way across, we are gonna flip it right sides together and we're gonna tuck in the sleeves and the peplum so that we can see the raw edge and we are just gonna pin this lining together. So everything is gonna be sandwiched in between the lining and the main fabric. So I forgot to leave a small opening on the side of the bodice. So I'm just gonna leave a small opening on the edge over here, just a few inches. And then in the end, when I'm turning it right side out, um, I'll just do a slip stitch to close the opening. Okay, so now I'm gonna sew all the way around leaving a small opening here and then finishing off my seams. I just like to use my marking pen to remind me because I have messed up way too many times. So I'm gonna go sew that at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance all the way around. Okay, I have the entire bodice all sewn together. Now I'm just gonna clip the corners and trim my seam allowance a bit. Okay, now through this opening that I have over here, I'm just gonna turn it right sides out. Okay, now that it's, I'm just gonna go back in now that it's all right sides out and I'm just gonna press these corners out to make sure they are nice and sharp. And I'm gonna pin this where our opening is. And then I did a straight stitch from the top of the bodice to the point right here, just to stitch down the gathering that we did earlier. Okay, we have this all done. The very last thing we have left to do is sew the buttons on the back. And we are gonna use this button guide. And this will show you how to evenly space your buttons and buttonholes. So we'll turn it over. So you'll put it against the back of your top and you'll just mark it where each line is. And you'll just go and sew your buttons and that's it.